welcome to the Enchantress Society with Tia Johnson, a place where you get to be you, where you get to unlock your magic in a sacred and judgment-free zone. The Enchantress Society is your witchy sisterhood of enchanting women who guides and supports you along your spiritual journey from the mundane to the magical. I invite you to sit for a spell as I interview guests and spill the spiritual tea on how we can create the magical life we deserve. Hello, Enchantress. I am so excited to present to you this interview. I know it sounds like I'm always excited to, <laughs> but it's true because I love the perspectives, the conversations that are had, they're always so unique. And uh, I really like, uh, especially how Jason and I met, because it's proof and a reminder for some that as long as you are showing up as yourself, no matter where you are, you're going to meet the right people. And I'll leave it at that because I want you to hear our story. It's very cute. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's nice to know that there are people who are still doing that work of showing up as themselves, spreading the positivity, uh, you know, just welcoming strangers, you know, saying hello and starting a conversation, things like that. That's refreshing. So let's get into it. Jason Kelly is a 22-year-old college student on a nurse practitioning track from the Philadelphia area who always had a passion for social media, networking, and being his true self and wanting to spread that love and positivity with anyone he can meet through the works of social media or in-person interaction. Working on his Instagram since the age of 12 and moving to the city at the age of 19, he has been able to work with many Philly-owned brands and creatives and meet so many unique, beautiful people along the way. Working with bigger name brands such as Spencer's, Grubhub, GoPuff, Lyft, and um, as well as many others, it's, if not the business side of Jason, he is also very opinionated and outspoken and extra, which I love. As uh, they like to say, he does not care what people tell him or have to say. He preaches being yourself and never backing down. And his very fashion forward, okay, and experimentative, okay. Please make sure you go check out Jason's Instagram because his fashion is, I'm telling you, top notch. <laughs> he creates, produces, cast, choreographer, um, and does choreography, and builds a team to make his own lip syncing videos to many popular songs, including his number one favorite, Cardi B. And garnishing the attention repost of Cardi B herself, uh oh, Megan Thee Stallion and Lizzo. With the pandemic, there were many pushbacks to some of his other passions, but this year, 2022, and on, he is hoping to get into the event throwing business and more. Starting out as becoming an event promoter, he now has begun to coordinate, host, and event perform at his own event he is trying to do more with the uh come with the future including his own masquerade ball which is happening on may 7th and the link for that would be in the description of this episode at the tlo events complex okay so without further ado welcome jason Yes. So Jason, I am so thrilled to have you here because as we were just discussing right before the recording, it's been about a year since we first met. Yes, literally. It's been like, it's been a crazy hectic year. It went pretty fast though, but I'm glad we finally, you know, got the time to get on a call together. Like, I've been so excited to do this with you. Yes. And, and I must say, I have to tell the listeners because I need them to have a visual of you. So I know you're going to go to his Instagram and all that jazz. 
So when I went to, uh, so Jason and I and a few other people in Philly were invited to an, uh, an influencer event that was also a reopening of a spa and uh, they do lashes yeah, and whiten your teeth. Very beautiful place. And he had the, this beautiful color red hair. Red is my favorite color. He was just so wow. vivid, showing up as himself. I was with my brother, like, brother, I just go, oh. I push him to the side, like, I got to go say hi to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. Yes. I don't know. Like, I love, like, just, like, freedom of expression. And definitely hair color is just one of those things that's, like, one of those things you don't always change. And I definitely love... I don't know, vibrancy and color. And I definitely like a good pop. So red was definitely the moment back then. Yeah, I am blue now. I know it might not be your favorite color, but. No, it is. Like, it's my other favorite yeah, color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no. And I appreciate you for coming up to say hi. Like, I loved your energy. You're so sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have a Philly connection. So as I was, you know, describing in your bio, you are a, a, a nurse practitioner, you're on that nurse practitioner track and you're in Philly yeah. and you're creating videos. <laughs> Where are you finding the time to do this? Because you I'll, are really living out, out loud. I have to tell them, <laughs> my, my friends always be saying like, take a nap. I'm like, I don't have like, I, when I joke with them, like, I don't have time. I'm like, no, I really don't have time. Like, I just feel like, Sometimes 24 hours ain't enough in the day to be getting mm-hmm. through everything. But like, I really do just try to find like a balance between, of course, like school, because that is really important to me, like education for anyone listening, get your education. That's like one thing that like, um, I always preach because my great grandma actually was a teacher and she always told me like, people can take a lot of things away from you, but they can't take your education away. Mm -hmm. And so that's just been always like one thing that I sat on, but like with time management, I I wish I could tell you, (laughs) like, I really don't like, I try, like, I think like, you know, my best advice would probably be like a schedule planner. I do try to like write everything out that I need to do for the week. And I do try to give myself as much time as possible. Like, you know, like Cardi B is like one of my biggest fans, but she always be, she hasn't always been posting music as frequently as possible. So I'm sitting here trying to plan ahead for these videos, but I just trying to wait for like music to drop or for like inspiration. But then once I find that inspiration or something in my head, like I just have to put it out. Like I'd be getting like ideas and like, even like with my last video, I did sweetest pie by Megan the stallion. And it was just like crazy. Cause I was even telling my friends, I'm like, I don't even know if I'm going to do a video like this year for my birthday or anything. And then I don't even know what happened. She announced it and it was her on like a cake. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I, I got some ideas. And then I just ran with it. And we put that out within like two weeks time. It was definitely very hectic and little sleep. But on my little off times, I do try to like catch up on sleep, give myself like, you know, a mental health day or something like that. But Yeah kind of where we're at on time right now but yeah yeah I, I I get it sometimes sleep is just it's not in the stars I mean we would like for it to be yes, there we have to literally. force it sometimes yeah <laughs> absolutely. I can get a good like five six hour I'm like okay that's a good night like that's that's like something there but eight hours oh those are like the diamond in the rough days I'm like love that <laughs> And and right. I appreciate that too because your your you know honesty because it's easy for someone to say oh yes you know I definitely get my sleep and I just you know yeah. make it all work. <laughs> no, you gotta. I don't. That's just like one thing about me is I'm always gonna be 100. I don't want anyone, you know, or at least people who do tune into what I be doing. Like I'm always 100 raw with everybody. I'm like, yep, I'm working on two hours, but you know. <laughs> I'm still trying my best like yeah no I don't know yeah it's definitely I don't I don't that's the one thing about social media is like sometimes it could like portray this whole like picture perfect you know everything but that's just never been my gig like I'm not gonna sit here and post up and say yeah everything's like <laughs> all good but yeah it's kind of yeah how I've always been <laughs> and that's what I like because especially when we are, you know, really just setting up our lives to 
go a certain way, like you with, you know, focusing on that, the nursing side and your yeah. creativity side, you know, you're going to have these times where unfortunately sleep is going to be sacrificed or, you know, maybe eating sometimes. And we look back and think, gosh, yeah. like, you know, if only I could have done things differently, but that's, that's the, uh, the trials and tribulations of just, you know, yeah. juggling a lot and not beating yourself up in the process. Yeah, most definitely. And especially like for anybody who like has goals, like there is going to be like times where you're struggling or there's maybe seem like a lot juggling, but I tell people like if you have a passion for something like obviously, you know, don't push yourself over the edge, but sometimes getting to that edge is going to be that extra like step or work you have to put into like really, you know, get a name for yourself or get whatever Mm -hmm. goal you're trying to do. Yeah. And and also I want to dive more into your videos because it is truly a, a production. Like it, it's it's I'm, I'm I'm especially saying this for the people who haven't seen it yet. It's a production, <laughs> capital P. Oh. And I, I I love it for so many reasons. I love that you are expressive. You are letting yourself just be free to put your material out there. Do you have um, certain like hype words that you say to yourself when you get together with people? You know, do you share the whole vision with them? What's your your process for getting yourself geared up to really put yourself out there? So um, I don't like so at least for like the beginning, like behind the scenes part of like the video. Like I definitely, you know, as of right now, I. I work like honestly on like a build a bill this to that basis like I always try to like budget the best I can but you know obviously I'm still like in my younger years I just turned 22 I'm still like trying to obviously work towards that nurse practitioner goal but we're not there yet so right now I'm kind of just doing like I do home health air oh sorry home health care so I take care of like elderly people in their homes independently right now so um that's been like one you know I do have like a really strong care for taking care of people but um Mm -hmm. there obviously is like you know I make a certain amount and I get to put it into things that I have a very strong passion for as well like with the videos and everything so I do like I said try to give myself like a good like month or two to like plan out the budget and the video and then I Honestly, just like being able to, I moved to the city around when I was like 29, um, in 2019. So I was like 19 at the time. And I just, at that point was like reaching out to like photographers, videographers, other creatives, like just trying to get as many like tips as I could and seeing like, if I could, um, meet other people in my creative space, like the way my mind works, who would want to like work with me on videos. Like it started, I mean, if we want to go back, I, my first video ever was just pride 2019. There was really no budget at all. It was me in a parking lot. And I just had like this idea at the time to like, you know, get a few friends together to be like these little like press people. And they were like taking photos of me and pretending like they were like my haters. And then it was really <laughs> just like a little minute of me in a parking lot nice. and then, like, to look at it, like to the where I've gotten to now where I'm trying to like, you know, actually try to put a team together and have like dancers and a videographer and like a stylist and um, all that. I mean, I definitely do try to take like still working on a budget, like take as much responsibility as I can to like produce. And and, like a lot of the times I choreograph my own things and yeah, but um I would say, yeah, I gave myself normally a month or two times and then I'll put a little team together and then I'll just, I try to like, I'll call everybody. I normally do like little conferences and I like talk about like what's going on in my head because there'd be a million ideas like coming up in my head that I'm like trying to put out like in words on a board. And then I normally like hone in on like an idea. And then that's when we start doing the producing and all that. And um it's definitely such a like fun, expressive way for me to just, you know, like you were saying, like, just be myself. And like, that's like one thing that if anything, people may look at the videos and be like, Oh, he thinks he's all that, or, Oh, he's extra or whatever this, that, that. But at the end of the day, like, I just want people to be able to see what I do and know that they can do it themselves if they want to, or they can express themselves in any way or be any way and not let someone, 
tear them down or tell them they can't do what they want to do. Like mm-hmm. that's how I've always been. And um I've always had, you know, some naysayers, but like I will never like let that stop me, even though like I do definitely uh would say like I do like to promote confidence and come off as a confident person. But at the end of the day, like we all have our, you know, insecurities and things that we deal with mentally. And like, I try my best not to let that stop me from doing what I want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, yeah, how I could explain it in the best way. No, that's amazing. And it's so refreshing because while while you were talking, I can just, you know, feel the the risk taking you took, you say, you know, you moved to the city when you were young. Like I couldn't even imagine moving, you know, at that age, which would have been like, you know, fun and cool, but also like, okay, now what? And then, you know, exactly. And then you are fueling your passions, you know, how you help people and your videos are also helping people. That's a domino effect with the people who you bring on board. I know that's helping them in some way, shape or form. And, you know, your videos can also be healing in a way when someone sees that and sees like, oh man, you know, he's really put himself out there. And to your point about, you know, there's always going to be some naysayer, you know, there's always going to be someone (laughs) But as long as we keep seeing one more person, you know, one more person, just screw it. I'm doing it. This is what I want to do. I'm listening to myself. I'm going to live my truth and put all my creativity out there for me and everyone else who's vibing with this. That That is yeah, refreshing and not easy to do now. Yes, definitely. And that's like all like this isn't like for some people it may seem like, oh, it's the personal gain type thing. But at the end of the day, the only gain I'm. I like, yes, I enjoy, you know, I don't, I'm not really more focused on like the insights or how many views I get or whatever this, that, and the third, but I'm more, like you said, like if I could change like one person's perspective on themselves or like help one person with their confidence or just in any way, like that's really like the main goal that I have, especially in Philly. Cause I feel like Philly is one of those cities that I don't know how to describe it, but like sometimes like it seems it is a very big city, but sometimes the way I meet people and they talk about it, it seems like people still talk about it. Like it's an underground and it is still Mm -hmm. very like up and coming and like, you know, in many aspects. And like, I just like would like to be like maybe like a different or like a bright light for like one person or whoever. Yeah, for sure. And and you're right. Like Philly has definitely come a long way. I, I still joke about like I you're much younger than me. <laughs> but I used to joke about uh how smooth Broad Street is now. It used to be like, you know, I, mm. I, I don't know, like a dirt bike race <laughs> was very <laughs> bumpy. And now it's the Avenue of the Arts and it's very yeah. nice. <laughs> like, and and no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's another thing too. I'm also glad that you are young and doing this uh, because I've come across so many people who are older and they feel like, well, I don't know, you know, maybe I can, you know, live it up on the weekends. That's one of the reasons why I, I, um, you know, I have this title living out loud because you are living out loud, not saying that you won't have, you know, life happens, you know, that you won't have things to overcome, but the fact that you are, you know, pushing through you're just you're doing it and 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 that's just an inspiration on many levels for people who really can have that even second win of sorts yeah no definitely and you know I that's what I want to that's what I always like tell people definitely because like obviously with the pandemic I haven't it's been a much harder in the past at least two years because I was like up and coming and like starting to like reach out and network more in like 2019 and then of course the pandemic happened. And even I remember, I'm very like, um, purse on a person to person level. I really like to like meet people and like, I'm a hugger. I'm Italian. I was always raised to just be very like outgoing, outspoken Mm -hmm. to people. And like, I just like hearing people's stories and feeling people's vibes and seeing people's faces and all that. So like for the pandemic to happen, like I was like, I'm, honestly like heartbroken at the time because I was like oh my god I'm not gonna be able to have like those interactions that like really fueled me at the time and so like during I remember in the beginning of the pandemic I actually did like this little like segment on my like Instagram where like every day like this was like the very beginning like lockdown lockdown like I would FaceTime somebody Mm -hmm. new 
like I would create a poll and anybody who wanted to respond, who would be interested, like I would come on, um, post in and then whoever responded, I would pick one person a day and I would call them on FaceTime. We'd have like a 30 minute talk and they would just like, tell me about their life. Like kind of like how we're having a talk to talk right now, like one, mm-hmm. something like that. And then I would write down like some of my favorite things that I learned about them. And then I would go on my story and like, I would give them like a little, give them a little shout out, like talk about them and like what I enjoyed about our conversation. And I did that like every day, I think for like a good month or maybe more than that. But like, I had like, a like such a good time doing that. And like, even like you like inspired me like to maybe look into like um like podcasting or something like that because it's definitely really cool and I like how you're bringing up the whole age thing like I just love meeting everybody from all types of different points in their lives different aspects and like I really would love to like let people know it doesn't matter like you know what point of your life is whether I'm starting early or you want to start you know something like later on in life, like, I just want people to know that they can find that fire within themselves and do whatever they want to do. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And, and that's so important because it's easy to, I don't want to say easy, but when, when something like a pandemic happens, something in life happens, we, we can slip into any thought or any you know phase and I I even did that uh was it 2020 you know these last two years are a time warp now (laughs) I'm like it's 20 something (laughs) yeah I don't know what year it is we're just still going (laughs) right yeah we're we're still going here it was uh I ended up taking it was about a two month maybe a little bit more break from my podcast I didn't know it was going to be two months Mm -hmm. it was just I just like, I don't know what I'm, you know, doing right now. Like, I just need a break. There's a lot going on. And it, it's, it's important to, you know, just do that sometimes to try and force something, which I, I get because sometimes we do have to force ourselves to get up out of bed and, you know, make yeah. money, things like that. But there is also something to be said about taking a step back and, you know, just really figuring out a situation and, give yourself that moment first and then think about what you're going to do. I hear a lot of people say, Oh, I pivot, I pivot, which is great. But some people needed that, that time out and then yes, the pivot. Definitely. Yes, definitely. And I don't like, even like when I, I have friends or myself, like definitely like grow, like as I grow up, I learn, I've been learning that lesson much. Oh, one sec. Sorry, one sec. Got a call. Sorry. My bad. Um, Sorry, you're popular. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as I was saying, um, no, like as I was getting I've gotten older, like I would always beat myself up more when I wanted to give myself that break. And I felt like I should have just kept pushing myself like harder and harder. But like as like, you know, time goes on, it's like you do need to give yourself that time to breathe or like like you do need to give yourself time to like rest or just take that mental break or step back and really be able to recoup. Cause sometimes like, you know, people get, you know, it's normal to have a block creative space block, or like, you don't know what you want to do next or like you want to try something new, but you just don't know what that is. So like taking that step back and like maybe be able to spend more time with yourself or like discover other avenues you you enjoy or whatever that may be like, it's okay to do that. Because I would say, like, in 2021, prior to, like, May, I actually, like, I think that's uh, the month that I'm, I'm pretty sure it was May, correct, 2021, that event was in, or it might have been. I think so. Yeah. I don't think it was in April, because it it, it was a fairly nice day. I want to say it was May. Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was either May or, yeah, around that time. But during, like, that whole month of May, I just, like, kind of took a step back and, old Jason before that probably would have like been like what are you doing like um it's been like a week since you posted something like you need to push yourself put on a fit and Mm. go out and take a picture Mm -hmm. but it's like at that time like there was um just like a lot of things going on and I just felt overwhelmed and I was like I need to give I deserve to give myself like a break and like 
take a breather and just like enjoy life. And I, at that time I was enjoying, you know, spending time with friends again. Cause like we were finally kind of getting into a little bit of a normal time and I, it was great, but of course, like giving myself that time lit a fire under me to like mm-hmm. want to get back out and even push harder. And that's what I did like um, towards like more June time. But I definitely do believe that everyone should give themselves a breather or like time when they do need it. I love that. Yeah, because living your best life doesn't mean you go until you hit E. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> you sure. Know? Exactly. Even when you are going to events and things like that, because especially, you know, in, in the, the summer months, you know, the late spring mm-hmm. months, you, you, you want to go out, you want to do these things and you feel like you're obligated to do that. And I just wanted to emphasize on that because, you know, people who are listening, they're maybe working two jobs and they're trying to start also their business and so many things. And it's okay. just like, OK, when do I take a break? When do I stop? I getting these opportunities. People want to collab and I want to say yes to all of them before you realize it's just like, oh no, <laughs> burnout. <laughs> yes. No. And sometimes it'll sneak up on you. Like you don't even know. And then it's like one day you just get that overwhelming feeling. And that's like one thing that like I have learned that I feel like definitely when it comes to mental health or like that space, like it's definitely like one of those like pot on the stove and sometimes like if you let let it bubble up like it's gonna explode and you just want to like try to take as much off your shoulders as you can to not get get yourself to that point basically right right and so what would you suggest or where would you suggest someone start when they're trying to to live their life out loud they are someone who's just like you know what yeah I've been focusing too much on so many things that don't involve me and my passions. What what are some some simple pathways, something just to get them started? So I would say for me, like even like I'm still like, it's definitely like a path of like discovering like who you are. So like even before, like for me, like growing up, like in um like throughout high school. I definitely, like, felt as though, like, I tried, like, different um, avenues of, like, what I personally enjoyed, like, enjoy doing, like, um, even, like, with fashion, like, I'm very into fashion, but I felt like it took me, like, maybe some more time to, like, want to try, like, new things, like, specifically, um, I definitely, like, went from, like, wanting to uh not explore like my feminine side to as you have seen on Instagram I am definitely more like open to exploring what whether it's just like trying on makeup or putting Mm -hmm. on nails or things like that but back then I was just so like um not uncomfortable but like it just like wasn't even like in my mindset but then now it's like just something I really love so I would say like if there's something that's out of your box or out of your normal, I don't think there's anything wrong with like exploring that. And for me, like, that's what, like, I just did like a lot of research. I would watch videos of people doing their makeup. I would see other people living like a life that I wanted to try. And that's just something that like, I try to push people to to do because even growing up, like I had a lot of people say things to me because I definitely was always very outspoken or like extra in a way and people would try to shut me down that's like the one thing that might have pushed me back from doing things even like quicker but like for that's the one advice I have people is like please don't like let anybody tell you whether it's a family member which Mm -hmm. I know is like definitely like 10 times harder sometimes to hear from somebody who's of course like blood over like just somebody random at school or like anything like that. Um, I was, I'm fortunate enough to have like a, a very supportive family. Um, at least like, you know, when I came out and everything, but you know, not, I, I am aware that there are people out there who don't always have somebody in their family to be uh, supportive. But I would say like, at the end of the day, from what I've told people is like, the only person you have at the end of the day is yourself and mm-hmm. spending that time with yourself to really know what you like and what works for you and what doesn't work for you um is important and that's definitely like something like I try to do like 
anytime I have an experience with a friend that might go sour or um, let's say I have like an idea for a shoot and it doesn't go the exact way I want it to, I like kind of make the most out of like what I'm given and work with it. And that's kind of, I know I'm kind of like going off on like a little. No, thing, no, I'm, like, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm, but, I'm like, shaking that's my head. Of, I'm that, <laughs> that's like what I would have to say for people is like, just don't be afraid. Like, I know it's so hard to do that, but like, that's why I just love like this generation that we're growing up in is because like, this is probably like one of like the most expressive times to be like, obviously we have a lot of work to still go uh, (laughs) with a lot of, a lot of topics. Uh, We could probably spend a whole podcast on that, (laughs) but like um, just like be authentically 100% yourself. And, you know, I feel like I just preach that over and over again, but like, I really feel like, yeah, don't let, it's hard to like have yourself be your number one person to actually set yourself back, but opening those doors and just like doing whatever you want to do, you'd be surprised like what you'll find. Ah, lovely. And I love that you're extra. I love it. Like, <laughs> be extra. I, I love it because I, I think sometimes why aren't street lights uh, like a nice color blue as opposed to that dim yellow mm-hmm. light? And someone could say, well, maybe to you, you know, someone could explain it to me a scientific reason. But I think like, why aren't some buildings more colorful? When I go to other countries, I'm just like, this is beautiful. Why aren't we uh, more, right? Why aren't we more vibrant and express? We go in so many yeah. buildings and it's the same. I, I call it Windows 98. It's like, you know, that <laughs> that dark navy blue. It's not oh, even like a nice navy blue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like you know so it's 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 it gets a little hard sometimes for people to be espressive because their environment is just so not that and um yeah, and so I love all these, yeah things happening on mm-hmm. the news and things like that mm-hmm. so scary for sure and and I love that uh you know you, you just talked about you know you just got to figure out how to be you and show up in that way you know because yeah. Right. Because if if you don't, then it's going to be, you know, that Windows 98. That's what you're going to see time and time again. Yes. No, and it's definitely like and I totally understand where people come from, how it is hard uh, to uh, put yourself out there sometimes, uh, especially like the way like how we were saying, like the way the world is like, because even for me, like. I do love promoting confidence. I do love expressing myself in every way, but I definitely do have those moments where, you know, um, like I remember at my birthday um, event, um, I was performing and I was in a box, like sitting in the box. I got like this life-size present made. It's in my recent video, but I brought it to the event and I was sitting in it for like 30 minutes. And I'm like, I sometimes get very anxious, like right before I do something or even when I'm going to an event mm-hmm. and like, I do, I will never like, I've gotten to a point where I push, I'll push myself not to get, uh, like let myself step back. But like, you know, I definitely do get those, um, pre anxiety chills before I go into an event. Like what if someone doesn't like what I'm wearing or like, what if they think it's too much or they've never seen somebody dressed like this or they don't accept me. But it's just like one of those things where it's like, you will meet so many people who do accept you Mm -hmm. over the few who may have something to say or want to put you down or don't believe in you. And like, even like, you know, like how we met, like we just happened to be at the same event, but like, there's just like those certain vibes you Mm -hmm. off with somebody that you feel comfortable enough to like go up to or start a conversation with. And then amazing things like this happen and stuff like that. Exactly. Yes. And, and it's, you know, again, uh, to one of your earlier points, it is a little bit scary, you know, you could feel afraid, but the other side of that is you get to meet really interesting people because you are showing up more and more as yourself and you get to find those people who want to celebrate you. I, I think like that sometimes too. I remember last year I did a, um, what was the one summit I did? It was like the uh, the sex magic summit. I can't remember it now. I was so nervous because I never talked about sex magic. I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> but here I am. <laughs> yeah, and it's great to like push yourself to do things that might be a little, like I was saying, out of your comfort zone. And then who knows like what you'll find out of it. 
Right. So do you make your own clothes? I don't remember if you said that or not. I don't uh, recall. I don't know. I'm still waiting for the sponsor deal, but I'm going to give them okay. a little shout out. But like, I, I know it's like a pretty common place that people shop, but like Fashion Nova online, they be nice. having all the fits that be fit yes. in my style. And I just like, you know, we love a good deal. So uh, <laughs> I, I love it. Hitting them up. I would love to, you know, I have like very, uh, I actually go to Jefferson and they are a very big fashion school. So, you know, a lot of the students on campus be getting a little shook when I'd be saying I'm a (laughs) science major and I'd be showing up in these fits to like talk about like anatomy and physiology. But um, yeah, I don't know. I've always had like, of course, like right now on the point that I'm at, I'm not at the budget level to always be getting like, you know, these expense. I I love living on a budget. I'll live on a budget until the day I die or mm-hmm. whatever. But, you know, if I happen to, you know, get that nurse practitioner check, maybe I'll be able to, <laughs> you know, you go. <laughs> yeah, like stylist. But like, I've, like for like some big things, like I really do like, like my videos are, are definitely, um, you know, I've worked with designers in the past for some of my videos. If it fits like what I can afford, I will definitely do it. Cause I love, I just love collaborating with as many like different creatives. Cause like Philly really be sleep. Like, I don't know about these people from these other cities, but they be sleeping on us. And there's so many like, thank you. Amazing <laughs> in this city. There are so many amazing people. Like, listen, some of us can be rough around the edges, but that's okay. That's part of, the, that's part of our <laughs> character. But there are just so many like talented designers, videographers, photographers, podcasters like yourself, bloggers, influencers that like people I just don't feel like really get to see. And I'm always on the lookout to work with like whoever I can. Like, um, I'm not like I've I'm gonna be 100. Like, I've been to like um, influencer events and you know. I have never uh, particularly liked the word influencer only because of like the stigma that kind of comes mm-hmm. behind like that whole like Hollywood influencer that like, right. You know, they think they're full of themselves. They only care about themselves. Like they only care. And I'm going to be 100. I've been to some of these events and I, I've met some people who have fit that character space. Oh and yeah. I <laughs> and I don't believe like clearly they're doing something right to be doing what they're doing, but I don't believe that's like, the mentality people should be going in have having this especially when we're talking about um an industry or uh if you want to make it a profession something where you're going to be interacting and working with people on a daily basis um Mm -hmm. you should definitely have some type of like care and understanding and humbleness and i've always like tried to keep like a humbleness because you know i'd be going out in these um bars or restaurants and or just places in public and sometimes there have been people who have like recognized me and um after like having a conversation with them sometimes it it shocks me when they I I mean I take it as a compliment because I'd rather you like me in person than on social media but like they'd be saying like oh I thought you were gonna like be this way or that way but you're like you're Mm -hmm. actually very like personable and down to earth and I I didn't think you know it, and I don't take it as an insult, but I also understand mm-hmm. where they're coming from because of the, like, right. the stigma that comes with, like, you know, someone who is putting themselves out there a lot. Oh, it might come off like, oh, yeah, oh, he must think he's all that. But, like, at the end of the day, like, that's not, I've come from a very, like, there have been dark moments where, you know, I wasn't happy in myself and I still have those moments. And, like, I'm not going to let, like, you know, any type of, uh, insight count or reach or uh impression or follower count tell me that I didn't come from somewhere to begin with like and there are right. just so many people like I said working just as hard out here who don't get enough recognition and that's why I love when I do these projects or shoots or just including as many people as I can who also have that drive that I see and I just see it so much in Philly and they need to stop sleeping on it <laughs> No, seriously. Yeah. Like when I leave Philly, sometimes I'm, I'm defending Philly when I, <laughs> Oh yeah. Same. They'd be like, Oh, Philly. I'd be like, what about it? Like, I'm like, hold up. Wait a minute. You know, I mean like, let's have a conversation here. Yeah. Before. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so many times, you know, I'm just like, okay, I, I had to, um, I don't have to, but many times I've been, I have politely checked people. Oh yeah. Let definitely. me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, also, um, I like that you, you know, you were just, again, that, that authenticity being real. I've been in social media, you know, settings where it's just like, wait a minute. Um, I'm sorry. Not that I would give a pass to an A-list celebrity, but it's just like, you know, we're literally in the same room together. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm here, <laughs> like, you're here, <laughs> we're together. Yeah, like, let's, like, we're all here for a reason. We're all here to do our own unique thing. Like, let's, we can all be in the same space. If anything, we all have a lot in common with each other and right. should be uplifting and helping each other rather than trying to be competitive or knock someone down off of their their own space you know yeah it exactly and and that's the thing and i i think too because your your videos come across as like you know so confident and it's like sass and it's so it's just you know it has personality and Mm -hmm. in in this day and age what i realized many times is that people take confidence being direct you know knowing yourself or at least being comfortable with yourself to a certain level as being offensive so they, conceited or yeah that you're conceited like that. right so they're seeing you like oh I thought you're gonna be you know this this is like no like I'm confident yeah. like you were saying I have yeah. days but I'm confident <laughs> yeah definitely yeah so you also have an event coming up I do so I do have this event for anyone who's listening in the Philadelphia area who'd be interested this event is come one or come all the the things that I like to promote about any event that I'm going to be planning or throwing in the near future so stay tuned but um I just honestly did like my first ever one like back in um it was oh wait it's still april see time be gone see know. it's i know literally this is only like two weeks I'm ago and I'm like, literally it was, that felt like a year ago already and it's only been two weeks um, but, <laughs> but um so april 2nd i just threw a little birthday bash i it was i had a you know i did shoot for the stars a little too far back in December and I had like this big event planned and then you know with the winter season COVID was still Mm -hmm. doing its thing and like there was just a lot of um behind the scenes factors of things that were going on in my life that kind of affected that so I didn't even know if I was still having it but I tried to you know at least keep as many of the details the same like the date and everything but I ended up being able to find this really um great venue they worked with me and we got it all done again in like two weeks, got to get some decorations, got to get the event right up and like the flyer and everything. And I was able to, you know, throw a pretty good event. Like it wasn't like, you know, mm-hmm. to the door, shoulder to shoulder, but I wasn't even trying to have anything like that anyway. Like it was just a like good space for everyone to come, right. be who they wanted to be dressed as extra or as non-extra i'm not gonna you know clock you if you want to come up in a t-shirt into my party but i'm also not gonna clock you if you want to come up in a whole carnival outfit feathers Mm -hmm. and all like i don't we are here to love all and that's kind of like what i would like to do i would i don't want to like cater to like one audience like i've had people come up to me and be like oh like are you trying to like reach a certain type a certain group of people like you know because I am part of the LGBT community like I'm like I, I, I am not here to appease one group of people or one anybody I'm here to appease anybody who just wants to be their true authentic self which mm-hmm. can be anybody no matter what you look like or mm-hmm. want to uh, identify as like so that's kind of where my events come from and so in on May 7th Saturday <clears throat> sorry we're going to be um, turning up. The t- it's at the TLO Events Complex. And it's going to be one of the most hype masquerade balls, which I haven't, you know, I haven't seen a masquerade ball in Philly in a hot minute. So I was really like depicting on like, oh, I want to do a follow up event because like that was just like the vibes were just so good. It was just full of self love and everyone mm-hmm. was turning up. And it was just like people from all over all ages. I had people coming from New York. Like I, I, you know, I, I love representing Philly, but everyone's welcome. And, um, so we're going to be doing it again for this masquerade ball, May 7th, um, Saturday. It's at the TLO events complex. You can come in whatever best masquerade mask 
or outfit that fits you the best, or, I mean, you know, the dress code is never required for me, but that's just something that, you know, it is the theme. And if you want to come show out and we're going to be, be um, having a DJ and he goes by the name of Hashland. He's super cool. Plays some of the best music. He really turned it up the last time it's from nine to 2 AM. And um, I'm going to be providing the link and everything. So the link is also on my Instagram in my bio tickets are only $20. This is an 18 plus event. It is open to all ages, all everybody, please come. It's going to be so much fun. And yeah, we're going to be having a cash bar, um, female exotic dancers, drag queen performances, and so much more with bottle service and hookah and just everything. We are, are going to, it's going to be so much fun. I'm just so excited. Like, this is like the one thing that I didn't miss because now that, you know, we are being able to have public events again and things like that. Like, this is definitely something that I've been wanting to do. I used to actually, um, help promote parties in the Philly area back before the pandemic started. And it was just something so cool. And like, I always looked at these people who were throwing these events. I'm like, how can I do that? Like, this seems so much fun. Like just bringing people together and like creating that good energy and space. And now that I'm starting to be able to do it slowly, like, uh, it's just been such like, so amazing. And it's been a lot of fun for sure. I'm excited for you. Like, this is, this is so amazing. And yeah. This is wow! It, it, it's a good time to get together too. So Absolutely. yeah, the, the the link is in the description of this episode, and you know I will also post it in my Instagram stories and things like that. And yeah, so yeah. any final words? Because I know we covered a lot, and I am just so again, I'm just so happy that you are just again real raw authentic is what I like to say you know yeah. you, it, it's it's again it's, it's one of those things where you could have easily been like oh yeah you know I'm young and I'm just doing my thing but you really broke it down so I just want to say I appreciate that and any final words um I just wanted to again say thank you so much for allowing me to have the space and time to talk with you like I've really enjoyed this like Like I said, you definitely inspire me even like this is why I like having these conversations because I like inspiring others, but I like hearing where other people come from and get inspiration from them. And I definitely want to like, like I said, look into podcasting. This seems so like cool. And like, I hope we can, you know, connect again or maybe see each other at another event. And for anyone Mm -hmm. who's listening again, just want to say thank you for tuning in and I hope I'll see you guys on the socials or on the gram or at my event, I would love to just meet and talk to as many people out there as possible. Thank you again so much. Yes, absolutely. And to everyone, I am sending you lots of love, many blessings. You know, I'm rooting for you. Be kind to yourself until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in, Magical One. Let's keep in touch. Join the VIP email list by going to tmariejohnson.com. And as always, I'm sending you lots of love, many blessings. I'm rooting for you. And remember to be kind to yourself. Until next time.